So I was watching a video from Richard Myers, and he was talking about this uh, new comic series called Big Girls. And he ended up not recommending the book because of this particular picture right here, how they end up drawing black women. And he puts forth a question. Uh, yeah, and this is supposed to be a black woman. And she's supposed to be an expert, but she's got very piss-poor trigger discipline. Anyway, however, um, he puts forth a question. He didn't know why they draw black men effeminate and black women masculine. And you have to go back to the whole progressive thing. See, one thing about SJW is they talk about, you know, the whole progressive stack and all this other nonsense that happens. And uh, one of the things of progressivism is black men and black women are viewed, uh, black women are viewed as, as an exotic uh, sex object and black men are viewed as savages to white people. This is how they, this is how they think all white people view both black men and, and black women. And so the response here is that, you know, SJWs, they always want to break the mold. They, they overcompensate for what they perceive society believing, when in reality, this is what they perceive. So it's more of a projection kind of deal, and they're just trying to hide it by looking progressive. So we don't want black women to be, you know, that's why we can't have a nice, good-looking storm anymore. Uh, because, oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> storm has to have, uh, has to be less about being, you know, bodacious a little bit. She can't, she can't be gorgeous anymore because then they would be there. Honestly, it comes back to 12 psychos. The 12 psychos on Twitter are going to jump out there and say, oh, oh, you're, you're making storm look like an exotic savage woman, an exotic savage sex object. And, and they're going to go after them. So the progressives in this case, they don't want to draw them that way. Uh, it ends up limiting them as artists, which I've I've said this before in a couple of my videos. This buying into SJW politics and everything limits you severely as an artist and puts you at such a disadvantage to artists who just don't care. Okay, um, you have uh, what was it, John Malin, who went in there and did Zashi. I was like one of the sexiest looking black chicks I have. Ever. I still have the Zashi poster here at the house. I think I got both of them actually. Yeah, I got both of the I got both the other jawbreakers. I have to get Grand Bazaar. That reminds me, I haven't ordered that yet. But anyway, <laughs> back to this. Um, that's also why we do the effeminate black men. Uh, we don't want black men to look masculine or or heroic because to them to cause to progressives an, an aggressive looking black man scares the shit out of them even though you can have characters that are highly aggressive that look you know hyper masculine but don't uh, come off as you know super like a savage or anything else for example one of my favorite movies the expendables terry cruz is one of those actors especially even in the expendables he does not come off as this really crazy, savage dude. The way the movie portrays him, he's an intelligent guy who understands the weapons that he owns. He, having him sitting there talking about his shotgun, he's going through statistics of this thing, what it can do. He's also talking about the miniature grenade, the miniature Frag 12s that he calls Omaya Kaboom, and he starts talking about the primer and everything. He knows what he's talking about. He comes off as knowing what he's talking about through the whole movie. And then there's a point where that masculinity ends up saving the team, I think at least three times. Uh, they got to deal with the guard towers. I know he ends up saving the entire team during um, during the, uh, what is it, the cocaine high winery? What is it, the co coca winery shootout? I guess that's what you call it. I don't know. But anyway, he ends up winning. Uh, he ends up saving him through the Coca Winery shootout, and then he ends up using his masculinity to chuck an artillery shell and and stop help Sylvester Stallone stop the bad guy. So I mean, you can do this. You can do sexy female, sexy black female characters without having to do the mental illness haircut, the massive jaws, and everything else. But progressives don't understand this. They're so afraid of being called. <sighs> racial colon or cultural colonization or something to that effect. They're, they're so worried about look, being looked down upon 
are being attacked because, oh, hey, you know, I drew this woman sexy. They're so they're so terrified of being told, oh, oh, you 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 created an exotic savage woman. Oh, that's that's colonialism. That's that's evil white bigotry right there. How dare you? And they they're afraid of this. And because they're afraid of it, we see this. They see this massive overcompensation to go so far to the opposite spectrum of what is sexy that we end up passing sex we end up passing moderately sexy completely up and miss the whole point of comics, which as Meyer stated in the in his video, comics is a visual medium. It has to be enticing. And another thing that that you know a lot of comic artists don't understand, a lot of women comic artists don't understand. But not all of them, just most of them, the ones that you're dealing with now, they don't understand that there's a reason comics is a visual medium and it's visual in the way that it's run. Because most men are attracted to things that they like. They're attra- when it comes down to physical attraction, men are more attracted to the physical traits of a woman, whereas a woman is more attracted to, say, the sound of a guy's voice, the perception of his intelligence. There's a lot more boxes a man has to check biologically to be considered a, a prosperous mate with a woman on a biological scale, mind you. This is not bro talk or nothing, than what a guy does with a woman. Okay, She just has to have you know pretty face and the right body type. And this is also, uh, I believe there was a, a study that was mentioned. I actually learned about this in my biology class in college where the, my, my biology teacher, he pulled up, I think it was like an Oxford or Harvard study, where they studied women walking by, uh, they put like a really fit underwear model out there in a gym with a bunch of women. And they studied what women did as they went by on camera. And what happened was they noticed that women, when they would walk by, when they saw this really, really good-looking guy, in their opinion, they noticed their hips swayed a bit more. They put a bit more swagger in their step. They threw their shoulders back more, straightened up. They kind of almost um, like a peacock <laughs> to an extent. And the reason being was the woman was trying to visually entice the man. And she was doing this subconsciously, not, not consciously doing it. It was just a subconscious thing. That's why you have to have sexy women in comics a lot of times. Most of the time, it's boys that are reading comics. Not saying women don't. But I'm saying most of the majority of the audience are young men. And young men are attracted to good-looking women because they look good. Anyway, I am The Last Raider. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell for notification. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.